Hello, my name is John Hoopenthal. I'm the Superintendent of Public Instruction for all of Arizona. Welcome to the virtual conference. Um, and also congratulations on this new, exciting, innovative concept. We at the Department of Education are excited and happy to be a part of this conference. As Superintendent of Public Instruction, I have oversight responsibility also for a Department of Education that has 480 employees. A fundamental part of my vision is to create a department that has a customer service focus where we define students and parents, teachers, principals, superintendents and school boards, and business managers and special education directors as our customers. These are not words that vibrate the air. This is a fundamental aspect of our belief in how we're going to transform education in Arizona. By defining you as our customer, what we intend to do is support you in every way possible and energize you in your mission of supporting teachers in the classroom. And that is fundamental to how we will be operating. We have already made significant strides in this work. As a part of defining you as a customer, we not only create that as a value, but we operationalize it by doing periodic and frequent surveys of customer service, having you rate the quality of our performance and making sure that we as leaders read every one of your comments, we systematically analyze your information to see how we can organize in a way to best meet your needs. For example, as a part of the feedback, we've got a lot of feedback about our computer system. And we know it's one of our services that was most in, in most difficult straits when we started our mission. So first off, we focused on that. We got the legislature to trust us with the resources to start doing the repairs. But we got that done on time, on budget. And that hugely improved the reliability of our system. Then we went to phase two. We replaced the operating system. A similar kind of challenge, a challenge for our IT professionals came through that with shining colors. As a part of our customer service focus, we've formed advisory groups, informally known as hoop groups. These groups are really important to us because oftentimes when we formulate and develop policies, we, there are inadvertently things that are included in these policies that make life difficult for the practitioners in the field. Without advisory groups, we can never get the feedback we need quickly enough to make adjustments in those policies to be as supportive as we can be. These advisory groups are critical to excellence in our mission. So for example, these advisory groups include superintendents, they include teachers, they include, um, we have an African American advisory group, um, we have a computer professionals advisory group, we have a Chinese language advisory group. All total, we're going to have somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 35 of these advisory groups when we're done. We in would invite you to be a part of this advisory group uh, policy um, pr uh, process. I myself attend all of these advisory group meetings and chair them. And it, it is a, as people who have attended these uh, groups will tell you, it is a two-way process in which we present, but we also get, we have robust discussions and your input is greatly valued and we have acted on the, the advice that we have gotten out of these advisory groups. We treasure the input from these groups. So we would very much advise you to be a, or, or ask you to be a part of this group and participate in it. As a part of our customer service philosophy, let's talk about the Common Core rollout for a second. This is the enormous challenge that's in front of us, and we need to know that this enormous challenge is going to be with us over the next decade. This is not going to be a slow rollout. This is a massive cultural change. As the head of this department, Kathy Rablick, um, has adopted a train the trainers approach to rolling out the Common Core standards and training teachers in the field. That's our approach at the center. Now all of us, we like you, we have very limited resources. So we have about four and a half employees to do this rollout. Now, four and a half employees, 70,000 teachers, over 2,200 principals, a massive number of professionals in the field. So we, this has to be a partnership between the Department of Education and the school districts. And we feel like we are moving along that path as smoothly as you can in such a massive and quick rollout. 
We know that many of you run world-class training organizations inside of your school districts, and we've seen those in, in action. So one of our duties is to support you in your work to the extent that we can to make sure that your training internally reflects the very best knowledge, the very best thinking, the very best technology associated with the Common Core Standards. That's our commitment to you. As we coordinate that, I would encourage you to send Kathy Rablick and myself um, the work that you are doing to train your teachers. That way we can best coordinate our activities in conjunction with yours. I love the fact that this conference has added to the arts to STEM to make it STEAM because that's near, the arts are near and dear to my heart. We, I personally got involved in starting up an arts contest here at the Department of Education. If you visited the Department of Education, you can see that student art has, decorates the walls within the department now. We um, feel that it has really brightened up the environment here. We get countless comments from people in admiration of the student art that is um, that's now decorating the halls. So we think the addition of the arts is critical. We think a fully flowered education includes the arts, includes career and technical education, includes physical education. We think that these uh, programs are a must. So adding the arts to STEM, thank you. We appreciate that addition. And of course, science, technology, engineering, and math, those are core things. And we feel we've talked about the science standards, or we'll talk about the science standards, um, but we feel like technology and math goes hand in hand. We ourselves feel that the future of education itself, not only will we be educating students about technology, but we think that the answer of breaking through, getting much higher academic gains, lies in technology. We think that blended learning is going to give us these breakthroughs in which we get much more rapid academic gains, we get economies of scale in, in education, we can afford to pay um, teachers and education leaders more, we think it's going to bring everything together. So technology and mathematics education, we think, go hand in hand. Both the use of technology to teach mathematics and the use of technology to teach students about technology is, is a close, integrate, integral part, part of the whole process. And of course, you can't really separate engineering and mathematics. Engineering is in, uh, in, uh, essentially an extension of mathematics. So we feel that, that math is at the core of the science, technology, engineering, and math process. To sum up, we're establishing a new philosophy in the Department of Education. We're providing a customer service philosophy where we define parents and students and teachers and principals and superintendents and school boards as our customer. And we're measuring the results of supporting all of our customers in the educational community. As a part of that, we're working to improve our computer system to make sure that it provides you accurate information for your budgeting, but not, not only just accurate information for your budgeting, but all of the other data that enables you to provide to make great leadership decisions on, an, on a timely basis. We're working across the board to engage your input through our advisory groups, from su superintendent advisory groups to school board advisory groups on through, to, on through to teachers. So the advisory groups are a critical part of our engagement. Um, we're working to pro provide a framework for transformational schools where we use the technology of blended learning and great pedagogy to create superior academic gains that can provide a model for, for implementation in our districts to provide great academic gains. So we're also traveling across the state so we can personally experience the challenges that many of our school districts have in providing education to low-income minority to Native American uh, communities. The, um, and finally, we're making sure that as our great uh, reforms roll across us that we're doing providing the very best intellectual leadership and training support for our school districts through um, through trans through these uh, reforms such as Common Core through STEM through STEAM all of these initiatives and once again thank you very much for allowing me to be a part of your online conference and we would actively um, seek your engagement at the Department of Education